<laughs> so, which capo am I on? This is which, argument for me. Oh, um. <coughs> or actually, let's do warm morning and then we'll do argument. Okay. okay. Want to? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll play. Last time we went to Jewel Ridge, which was back in August, went to visit this lady named Donna Witt, who lives in the oldest house on Jewel Ridge. It's got a tin roof, and it's got what you would call cladding, I think, over here. It's clapboard, white clapboard um, on the outside, and two screen doors to let the air flow through the house. And behind the house, there's a tiny little house that looks like the house. And that tiny little house was very important until about 1996. It was the wash house. And people would go out there, and that's where the bathroom was, and um, have a bath out there, a clawfoot tub. And um, in 1996, they got water up on the mountain. So the whole time that I went there, when I was a little girl, there was no running water. We had um, a cistern that was always cracked that collected rainwater, and you could get some water out of there. It wasn't very nice water. And then we had a well for drinking water. But whenever we wanted to take a bath, we went down to see our grandmother who lived in town. And then we had all kinds of bath toys that used to be at the top of our birthday cake. We always wanted a birthday cake that had lots of toys on top of it because then they transferred to the bath as bath toys. So it was like two gifts in one, you see. And um, anyhow, the wash house, of course, isn't needed anymore behind Donna Witt's house. Um, but it's still standing there, and I asked her if I could peek inside there because I wanted to see and she said, well, sure, I suppose it's a bit of a mess. And I peeked inside, and inside there was a stove. And on the stove it said, warm morning. And I thought, well, golly, if you're going to have a stove, you want a warm morning stove, for sure. I mean, isn't that what you want in the morning, a warm morning? And um, so I took a picture of it because I just thought it was the sweetest thing. And I put it on Facebook, in which, you know, my dad wrote a comment about the warm morning stove. He said, well... Your Uncle Tom and I slept downstairs in the basement right next to the warm morning stove. We thought that winter was a tropical season because we had to sleep next to the stove and then Mama was always worried about us getting sick and she put ten quilts on top of us on top of that. <laughs> See, they had to keep the stove cranked up because it was in the basement. And then in all the rooms above, they had a grate in the floor and the heat rose through the grate and that's how you got heat into the upstairs of the house. But the people sleeping in the basement were highly tropical, kind of like the back of Billy's guitar. So um, I thought there might be a little bit of a song in there, if I think on that. And then my grandmother, when we were visiting her that time, told a tale on my dad. And she said, now honey, don't you tell him I told you this. And so I put it in a song. Because that's not really telling him that I told him. I mean, it just happens to be a fact that exists now in his song. And I never had to directly say, well, Mama said this about you. I just put it in the song and it happened to be there. Um, and the tale was that it's not too good to be too smart. Because you see, my dad, um, he was raised by my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and my great-grandfather. And my great-grandfather, the coal miner who mined coal for 43 years, did not want my dad to become a coal miner too. So when the World Book Encyclopedia man came to the front door, I can't believe he went all the way up to Smith Ridge in the middle of nowhere at the end of the world, but he did. My great-grandfather bought the whole World Book Encyclopedia as well as the Atlas and Dictionary Addendums. And he said to my dad, you are going to read these and go to school. And my dad, who had ultimate respect for my great-grandfather, did read them, and that's how he got to go to Harvard University. And um, so he was smart, but Mama said that was a terrible li liability because when you're smart, the football coach, this is American football, um, decides that you can memorize all the plays for all of the games, and they make you the quarterback of the football team. But of course, that was fine, except that my dad had no athletic ability whatsoever. And so he was always getting clobbered, and they lost every game of the entire season. So that's where being smart really didn't come into handy after all. And then she said, the other thing is, when you're smart, you can check out books from the library. And your dad checked out a book on corn liquor still building. You can see this is a fam family thing. And, and um, he and your Uncle Tom built a liquor still in the woods without telling me, and then they tried to blow each other up. And she said, that's why, honey, it's just 
being smart is not all it's cracked up to be. So um, I thought, well, there's definitely a song in there. So that's how we came to write this song for my dad and Uncle Tom, and it is called The Warm Morning Stove. My brother and I, we slept in the basement with the warm morning stove and tin quilts on the bed. Mama, she slept in the room up above us and the grate in the floor told her all that we said. We dreamed of cowboys and red fire engines and a building is still in the woods out back cause what was the use of all that book learning except to make corn liquor and play quarterback Bye. 
my memory.